Hi, this is Parts Project, and I'm going to show you how to get 64 global effects scenes out of the Digitech per pattern. You're not supposed to get effect scenes out of the Digitech. That's for the Octatrack or the Analog Rhythm. But something happens when you set it up a certain way. This is all audio from the Digitech. It's just being triggered by the model samples. So, this is how I set it up. MIDI out for model samples into the Digitech. Project default settings for MIDI. You can just leave them as they are, except in the model samples, go to each track and turn on uh, MIDI out. So go to function, press function and track. If you can't see the screen, sorry about that. But it's pretty simple. It's just in the middle option. It says M out click on it. If it's not on, it won't trigger. Turn it on. It triggers. You can see it's triggering the dig attack. Nothing, no audio coming out of the model samples yet. I perform using layers, so I'll have the audio, I'll have a complementary layer of audio that corresponds to the track on the dig attack that I can bring out and have separate controls for, but I'll cover that in a second. So, that's it. Oh, except for there's an octave problem or some kind of an issue, they read octaves differently. Uh, basically, change the... Because the, C, the root note, something about the root note being different, and the same sample placed in both machines will sound the same, but they'll be at different root notes, but they'll sound the same. So if you... It only matters if you want to have audio coming out of the model samples. Um, otherwise, you could just pitch this down, and then it would play this normally. But uh, then it would play the model samples samples <laughs> differently uh, look too low so to fix that um just to save time i'll just tell you this is how i do it without explaining anything more uh boring stuff just set it to each pad each track on the model samples to root note c4 instead of c5 pitch up it just function it's easy function function and uh, pitch turn it up it'll snap to plus 12 so plus 12 on every track root note c4 plus 12 pitch. On the dig attack, root note on the trig page, root note C4, and minus 12. And, you, and again, it just function and turn it and it snaps. Uh, set it up like that and it'll work fine. So now, on to the scenes in the dig attack. So, let's start with, let's mute all the other tracks. Uh, seven and eight don't matter. Those can be just independent, free tracks to do whatever you want that have uh, that are just you know only dig attack tracks. For now, we won't really even. It's up to you to decide what to do with those. We're on track one with the kick. Place, uh, open it up for sixty four steps, four full pages each track. Sixty four steps. Set them all to be sixty four steps, and you'll notice that each track is filled up with trigs. Set them all to be fill trigs. That's in the conditional trigs uh, part. Just change it to fill. So, anyway, just change it to fill. And when you... Now we're going to do parameter locking. When you do a parameter lock, uh, you'll notice these are flashing, so they have P locks on them. <clears throat> I'm just going to do uh, try one on a track that nothing... Nothing's on there yet. Um, okay, there's our kick. When you hold a trig and turn parameters, it's supposed to lock those parameters that you set only for that one trig. When the sequencer hits it, they get activated. Only that one trig gets activated. Let's try the high, high pass filter. When you do it, in this case, and it's receiving notes, I don't know what it is exactly. Uh, it's receiving it's, it's receiving MIDI notes. Uh, it's being triggered. When you do it in this case, it does it for the whole track, not just for that one trig. But when you let it go, it goes back. That behaves like an effect scene. Now, we're on track one. Let's open up the hi-hat and let's go to track six. Where did we put that trig? 
on trig number 14. Okay, so we go to the hi-hat. Let's press trig number 14 now that we're on the hi-hat track in the dig attack. It affects the scene that we locked for the, the kick track for track one. It's global. No matter what track you're on, as long as a scene has been placed on that number of trig in any other track, it's going to affect the other tracks. So now that we're here on the hi-hat track, let's eh, pitch down the hi-hat, maybe open it up a bit, <clears throat> turn down the volume, put a little bit of delay. You know what? Let's even just change, change the sample entirely. So that's all P-locked. Now when we let go, goes back to the way things really are. This now is an effect scene. Let's do it with all the tracks for just this one scene. There we go. So we got track five sending out tricks to track five. Let's go to track five in the dig attack now. Go into our sequencer. Go to that same trig. Oh, looks like I already laid one down for that track. So uh, what did I do? The, the pitch or something? Oh, it was the sample. Yeah. So this one's already has the, the sample has been changed. Let's try that one. Filter it down a bit. Maybe do a loop. Forward loop and shorten it. Open up the uh, amp. Now let it go. Let's open up this. Let's add this one. Go to track four. Go to the same trig. Now we're on track four of the dig attack. Go to the same trig. And let's change the, the sample. So that it's noticeable. Pitch it down. Um, let's have the LFO affect the, the tuning. Let's put some delay and high pass it. Now let it go. All right, now let's add track number three. All right, track number three. Let's pitch that up and put some bit rate. Filter it down. Let's put the LFO to affect the sample, um, the actual sample slot. Let's try that. There's a scene. We've now created a scene that affects all the tracks. I didn't do track two because track two is just um, a low end rumble kind of thing. So I usually just leave that alone. Or I could have it so that the scene uh, high passes that in, in case we want to like bring it out, you know, like remove the low end. Brilliant. And I like the unpredictability if we set the LFO to affect the sample slot on one of those tracks. And that way when we press the scene, we could even do that with every single track and having the LFO on every track affecting the sample start so that when you hit it, you actually don't know what the heck's going to happen. Anyway, let's go to some of these scenes that I created earlier. There's nothing on that one. There you go. Pretty, uh, pretty cool. I like that. I like that because then, you know, when I'm playing the model samples, just triggering the dig attack, you know, just playing. I like the samples because it's fast, you know, you can just kind of enter sequences quickly it's kind of intuitive that way you know and just put put down something like this you know it's nice and friendly that way and you can be a little physical with it right but now these scenes are still the same no matter what the what the sequence is on the samples the scenes You can like 
mute these if we want. And then just bring it in. So you can have, uh, this is just one page. Each page is 16 new triggers. You can put 64 different effect scenes on each pattern. And since the, tr the, tr the sequencer, the trig note information is not coming from within the, uh, the Digitech, it's coming from the model samples, the sequencer is separate from pattern changes in the Digitech. You can change to another pattern in the Digitech without changing the sequencer data here, uh, um, provided that program changes are turned off, that you're not sending program changes from the model samples. You can set it if you want to, but. So what that means is each pattern has 64 fresh effect scenes. You can have 64 completely different effect scenes for each pattern per pro in, in a single project. A project in the Digitech has 128 patterns. What's 128 times 64? I should know this. I think it's 8,192. 8,192 effect scenes. Yeah, I was on the I was on page number four, and that's why it wasn't working because there's no scene there. But I, you'll notice I have some on page four. Just like I wanted to test to make sure. And you could set it up however you want. You could have it strategic, so like these four could just be um, sort of high passing the kick. So it's like you you have certain ones that only high pass the kick in different ways. So it give you that little break, and then you come back, bring the kick in. You know, it could also be high passing the low bass or whatever. However you have it set up. But then this one for that scene could also be maybe doing a little something to the to the delay of the stab and then let it go and then that delay rings out like that just because you pressed that scene you didn't have to go in and and turn up the uh the, de the delay you just pressed it you can ha have it set up however you want and considering you have 64 per pattern and 8192 per project that gives you quite a lot of flexibility you run with it. You decide how the scenes are going to go. You decide what layers you're going to have to trigger if you're going to do layers. You decide what samples go in there. And, and uh, uh, my goodness, all I have to say is my goodness. So what you're kind of giving up is uh, you don't have parameter locking within the Digitech, but you can do parameter locking since it's an electron sequencer. You can do trig conditions like normal and it'll affect it. Um, the pitching, pitching parameter locking will only parameter lock, uh, the internal model samples sounds unless you have encoders turned on to, to external, the encoder, the external encoder system right now has not been fully fleshed out. In my opinion, it's kind of weird. The vault, <clears throat> just the volume pot alone makes it because they don't read it the same. Like, uh, 63 is like full volume or like normal default volume and 100 is default volume here. So if you turn this down a bit, it'll just jump it down to... Anyway, uh, I don't leave it like... Well, I don't use that also because I, I just want to have independent control over my layers. So I, uh, let's let's show you... Just for fun, let's show you the layers. Let's do a little like performance as I talk. Uh, this is what I've got. What I've chosen is a good complementary sample for the kick. So model samples bring up the volume. Kind of like a... Yeah, like a tone. Like an overdriven kind of harmonic tone there harmonic tone you can change the sample start of it I can affect the decay if I want just a little bit uh, the cutoff of course resonance you know I can do I can have all that independent control over just that sound you can turn up the delay and the reverb of this sound without messing with the even though they're kind of glued as one kick I can do delay and reverb 
without you know without putting you know reverb on that low end which uh, y y let's face it you don't always want to do that i mean i never i really kind of never want to put reverb on the low end or, uh, can change the sample quickly and the sample start and notice you have the delay from the previous so like put the delay on this then change the sample and then so if you have the delay time of the the feedback set to like 100 then you can basically loop again and again you just keep on looping sounds and go absolutely bonkers with it what do i got for the hi-hat i've got layered on the hi-hat i've got uh yeah like a nice longer sort of 606 which i can affect the decay of you know model samples makes you able to access sounds a lot quicker because you're not page jumping you know you just hit the pad and there it is uh, so it's a great way to like open up the hi-hat and having that extra and then you can put delay on it separately and then on, on this hi-hat you can have a different delay time and different delay behaviors so you can have a delay set to a different timing than this one and have all kinds of crazy uh, stuff going on like you could really mess with the delay here and have it go off but then this since this one is still on you know okay what do i let's turn the delay off what do i what do i got for this one uh but what have i got layered yeah some kind of other sort of like a vocal stab so i can change the sample on the dig attack and you know parameters like that and here we can change the sample Oh, that's a good one. Change the volume here without affecting the volume there, so you can kind of, uh, you know, mix them independently, get them working together nice. What have I got here? What have I, what have I, what's layered on this one? Turn up, this, turn up the volume. It's just kind of like another, you know, another perk sound. Now let's try some of the scenes, right? So these scenes don't affect the model samples, obviously. You're just doing it kind of there. Which means that when you're here, you could like pressing this one and like mute that one, mute the kick, bring them back in. Or what I like is like the re-trigger of the model samples doesn't actually re-trigger the the tracks it doesn't send midi retrigger out you can see that as a disadvantage but what um what i like about it is when you're retriggering this sound it mutes the sound on there let's do it with that right so like when i retrigger here it retriggers model samples but not the dig attack in fact it mutes it right so if we combine that with a scene You've got some really good performance potential there. Do it with a kick. it harder there you go so you decide when the you know when the breakdowns happen and how long they happen and during a breakdown you, know, you can just like break down change you know bring up the delay like crazy turn it down anyway there you go i mean i could do this all day right so just um enjoy that if it's useful for t for you, um, let me know how you use it. I'd love to hear w how this is being implemented. I hope that Electron can, at the very least, not fix this 
bug, you could call it. Although I don't even feel comfortable calling it a bug. I mean, this is a miracle. And uh, we need this. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I need this. Uh, I'd uh, Hopefully some of you find this useful as well. So if you do, if you like the video, please like the video. Smash that like button, I should say. And uh, subscribe. And hit the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. If you want a particular kind of video, let me know what you... Or if I need to explain this even deeper, if I've left anything out, you know, let me know in the comments. And uh, with that being said, enjoy. Have a good day. This is Parts Project, signing off.